JShell is a great new addition to the Java platform as of Java 9. It's a shell that lets you enter and run Java syntax. You can do that really quickly and see results really quickly. It's a great learning tool. And not only that, it's also a great tool to add to your Java coding and development experience by incorporating it into your workflow. Welcome to this course, JShell Basics. This course introduces you to JShell. You'll learn how to set up and use it and we'll also learn how it works and how to make the most of it as Java developers. Before we get into JShell, let me ask you a question. What happens when you add integer.maxValue with one? You wanna run this statement, do you know what happens? Well, if you already know, you must have guessed what the answer is now, but let's say you don't know and you wanna validate it. You wanna figure it out. So how do you do this? You write a Java program, right? You write a class, you put that line in there, you compile it, you execute it, and then you know that it the integer value wraps around to the min value. But think about all the steps that you're gonna have to do to validate this one single line of Java code. So you're gonna have to create a Java file, right? You need the Java file, put it in a package. Well, kind of optional, but it's recommended. You write a class declaration, right? A class is gonna be what's containing your code all that code that you write has to be inside a class. So you write the class and that's not enough. In that class, you write a main method. And then within that main method is where you write your code. That one line that you want to validate. And then you got to print out that output. You put it, you put a system.out.println around your code so that it prints that output. Then you save that file. You compile it with the Java compiler and then you run it. And that's when you actually see the output that you have in mind. All you wanna do is run one single statement and see what the result is. And you have to do all these steps. And there's just one step in this whole thing, which is what you actually want to do. And then there are all these steps before and after that you have to do to get this to work. So there's a little bit of tedium involved in writing Java code. If you wanna just play around with it, right? Experiment, prototype, any of that kind of stuff. There's a lot of overhead involved. More than the overhead, there is also another thing that's that this whole thing is causing that's holding back Java. We talk about various aspects of Java being, uh, you know, it does static type checking, it is object oriented, you write once, run in multiple platforms, yes. But there's one other aspect that I think most languages would like to score well on, and that is beginner friendliness. How beginner friendly is Java? And this is something that I faced personally when it comes to teaching Java to somebody who's completely new to Java. How do I get them to start writing their first Java program? The, that list that we went through, there's a whole lot of steps that they have to do to run their first Hello World program, which is kind of like the thing that you do when you learn a new language. When you're teaching somebody new to write that Hello World program, you have to basically tell them to ignore all those steps, just do it because that's what the Java platform needs in order to run a program. But then what they're gonna be learning is that very small portion of all that code that they write. So this has always been a problem which has held Java back. And then there are a lot of other languages which have excelled in beginner friendliness. You think of Python, you think of JavaScript, but there are no JS ecosystem. There are a lot of languages which are more beginner friendly because they have a shell, an interpreter, where people can just run arbitrary statements and get started quickly. Well, Java is no longer held back. Since Java 9, there is an implementation of a shell which allows you to do just that. You can run a shell which understands Java. You can run Java statements and then have it executed and return a response immediately without having to go through that whole ceremony of creating a class, creating a main method and all that stuff. This is very, very quick. So what is JShell? The way I think about it, a very simplistic definition, it's just a prompt for you to type and execute Java syntax. Just like you have your operating system shell where you can run operating system commands, type the command, hit enter, and you immediately see the output, well, guess what? You can do something like that with Java now. You can run Java statements in a prompt, type that statement, hit enter, and you immediately see a result. So imagine if you had a prompt like this, a JShell prompt, where you can just type this statement, integer.maxValue plus one, and hit enter, and see the result right away. 
Isn't that awesome? This is something that we could use. This is something that I would love to use when I'm writing code, when I'm prototyping. And no matter how many years I've used Java, I'm still learning, of course. So whenever I want to learn something new, I can go to the shell, type something, hit enter, and then it gives me the output, which is amazing. I'd love to have something like that. And that's what JShell provides. JShell provides what's called a REPL, or some people call it REPL. It stands for Read, Evaluate, Print, Loop. This is essentially the behavior of all those prompts that I talked about, your operating system prompt. You have a prompt where there is a program which is listening for your command. You type in the command, the program reads it, it evaluates it, the program gets it as a string, so it evaluates it as a piece of code, and then it executes it, then it prints the output of that evaluation, and then it loops through till you exit the shell, right? So this is essentially what JShell does. It takes single user inputs, expressions, lines of code, whatever you type in there, and then it evaluates and returns the result right away. You don't need a full program definition for it to even begin executing. You can execute individual statements. So here are the learning objectives for this course. We will look at what you can do with JShell. What are the commands you can run with it? How does it behave and how you can make use of it? And then we look at how it works. Java is not meant for a shell-like environment. Java is designed, Java has had a long history of having these features designed for like a coding scenario. You type the code in a file and then you compile it, right? So it is a sequential process. You complete your code and then you compile it. Java as designed for all these years is not meant for this kind of an interactive shell usage. So how does it even work? Well, it turns out the creators of the platform have made some, I wouldn't call it hacks, they've made some tweaks to how Java works, tweaks to how JShell interprets the language, and that's what makes this whole thing work. So we're not gonna stop with just looking at what JShell is and how to use it. We'll also take a look at how it works and what are the tweaks that has been done to the platform to facilitate being able to write Java code in this kind of a prompt-like situation. And then we're also gonna be looking at why it works. And this is not something that a lot of uh, online tutorials that I see today cover. Why does this work? When you're writing code like this, imagine a prompt where you're writing Java code line by line. Where is the compiler here and where is the interpreter? You need a compiler to compile your Java code. That's how it's been for so many years. So when you're doing this kind of an interaction where you type in a command and then hit enter and see the results, where's the compiler and where's the interpreter? Secondly, we know that every Java line of code has to be inside a class. That's kind of fundamental to how Java works. And that's kind of what's been the problem when you have to write a simple Hello World program and you have to write all that stuff. You have to write a class, you have to write a main method because every line of Java code has to be inside a class. So when you're writing a prompt like this, where's the class? Where's the compiler? So we're gonna be answering all those questions in this course. So we're gonna be looking a little bit beyond just using the shell. I understand that this is a basics course as the title says, so we're not gonna go into a lot of detail, but I think it's important for you to understand what's going on behind the scenes when you're using the shell so that you kind of understand how the platform has evolved to facilitate this. And it kind of, I think, influences the way you use the program as well. So I hope you're excited to take this course. This is, uh, again, JShell Basics. By the time you're done, you will have good familiarity with the shell and um, hopefully use it as you write Java code and make it an important tool in your tool belt when you're developing Java applications.